Coming up on the Paper Talk today, we'll be looking at this stadium here, Old Trafford. Is it going to become New Trafford? There's talk that maybe there's going to be a rebuild other than a revamp and there could be some plans afoot with Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe wanting to make this the Wembley of the North. So we'll be looking at that. Plus, there's another story during the rounds about Manchester United not being able to get into Europe because Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos own Nice as well as only Manchester United or part only Manchester United. We'll be looking at that because that story seems to come up every few months and it's doing the rounds again. So let's get into it. Is that all right? That's perfect. Right, sound. Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk, as you can see. I'm outside Old Trafford and it's barbecue weather. It's absolutely sun shining. So get your barbecues out. Obviously, I'm taking the mic. It's booking it down. Uh, anyway, loads of stories to get through, so we'll crack on. Before we do, though, make sure you are hitting like, share, and subscribe. Want to get to 750,000 subscribers by the end of the season, and with your support, yes, you, we can get there. Right, let's start with this talk of Manchester United potentially not going into the Champions League because we could be bad, because Ineos own Nice in France, and also Manchester United, and there's a UEFA rule that says if you own two clubs, the club that finishes higher in their league, they get precedence of going into European competition. So to pick the bones through this, Nice, I think at the minute, are fifth in League Un. If Nice were to qualify for the Europa League, finishing higher in their league than Manchester United did, then Manchester United wouldn't be able to go in the Europa League. Now, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has, has broached this subject before and he said there's no way or there's no circumstances with the because of his ownership of Manchester United, that's going to cost us European competition. He said, this isn't going to happen. Now, you may say, oh, well, he, he would say that. You may believe him. It's, you may not believe him. It's up to you. I think you have to look where this story's come from. It's been reported in several papers. I think it's in the Mail, one or two others. I think it's come from the Sun. Hashtag don't buy the Sun. Now, we have spoke about this before. And he said, look, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get chucked out or stop from playing in European competition because I've just spent a billion quid buying Manchester United. It does seem highly unlikely. And you have to look at other clubs as well. Now, I've said this before. The one you look at is look at Girona um, in La Liga. Now, currently, I think they're third. I think they're a couple of points um, behind. Is it Barcelona in second? And then Real Madrid are sort of running away with it a little bit at the top of the table. Now, there's a scenario where Girona could finish second and Manchester City, because it's a City group that owns both clubs, could finish third in the Premier League. You could have a scenario where Arsenal finish top, Liverpool second, City third. Unlikely, but it is plausible. It could happen, right? Are you telling me that Manchester City aren't going to go in the Champions League? because your owner have finished above them in terms of the tables, because they're both owned by the City Group. Of course not. That's not going to happen. So I think this nonsense that comes around about, oh, well, Manchester United aren't going to go in the Europa League or they're going to have to go in the Europa Conference because of what's happening at Nice. I just cannot see it because of other clubs as well. And I don't see a scenario where other clubs would allow that to happen. And I don't see a scenario where Sir Jim Ratcliffe would spend a billion buying 28% of Manchester United, put 285 million quid into the stadium, which I'm going to get to in a minute, on the training ground, and then go, actually, <laughs> spend all that money and it just cost us getting into the Europa League or cost us getting into the Champions League, whatever. It's nonsensical. I don't believe it. You may differ. Get involved in the chat in the comments. Let me know what you think about that story. I want to talk about the stadium as well because the story during the rounds in the Manchester Evening News that Ineos have brought in these planners to look at sort of how they're going to go about building a new stadium. New Trafford, I think is the name it's being called in the papers. What that's going to look like, how they're going to design it, all that other stuff. We're still not completely sure whether it's going to be a revamp of the stadium here or a rebuild. But on the Geraint Thomas podcast recently, so Jim Ratcliffe did speak about a new Trafford, did speak about Wembley North. He spoke about it several times. He spoke about the opportunity here with the land that you've got near the stadium where you could build a state-of-the-art brand new stadium, 90,000 or even 100,000 seat stadium. That makes sense to me. If you can have a stadium, a new stadium here at this site, that would be perfect for me. That would be the best of both worlds. Now, I know a lot of people will say, Jay, you can't get rid of Old Trafford. It's our heritage. It's our history. It's what makes us who we are. I understand all that. Some of the best memories I've ever had in my life have been in this stadium. However, it is over 100 years old, I think. It is crumbling. We've seen bits of concrete falling on people's heads. There's only so many times you can revamp it before you have to go with a whole new rebuild. And that's where I think a new stadium might be the answer because I think you've got the opportunity now to do it. You might not always have that opportunity. You've got the opportunity to put it in the same site, practically, where the, the, the current stadium is. Do that. Let's make it happen. All your history comes with you. 
and you'll still be coming to Old Trafford. It'll just be New Trafford. As always, let me know what you think about that. There's a couple of other stories I want to talk about. I want to talk about Tyrone Molassia because of all of this from a journalist called Christopher Michelle, I think his name is. Now, he writes for Sport Irons. We've had Sport Irons on the channel before. We have the likes of Florian Plettenberg when he used to write for him coming on the channel. I think they're a reputable um, outlet in Germany. Now, he said that Tyrone Molassia's injury is not just physical, it's also mental as well. There may be some mental issues or some mental injury whatever you want to call it, that's stopping him from playing for Manchester United. If that is the case, and it's a big if, because I'm not going to pretend that I'd heard of this journalist before yesterday, so we don't know. But if that is the case, I hope that Tyrone Molassia is getting the support and help that he needs because, listen, not being well mentally is as important as not being well physically. Some would argue even more so. And I think we have to take this seriously. If that is the case, again, you know, there's lots of ifs and buts and maybes, but if that is the case, I do hope he is getting the support because it has become a mystery. Where's Tyrone Molassio? What's going on with him? A month ago, we heard he was back in training. Still seems he's no nearer to coming back into the team. There's all these rumours and conjecture going on about as he had an operation that didn't work out or the rest of it. Now we've got these other reports that there could be something there mentally that's preventing him from playing for Manchester United. Whatever it is, I hope the young lad is getting all the help, support, rehabilitation that he needs and we wish him a speedy recovery. And if it is something that's to do with his mental well-being, then I hope we can take that seriously because, like I said earlier, you can't just think your way out of that. You can't just say, oh, well, just, you know, just pull your socks up and show a bit of stiff upper lip and get on with it. That's nonsense, yeah? Lots of people suffer with mental um, illness and if you are suffering with it, then you need to get the help and support you, you need, regardless of whether you play for Manchester United or not. It doesn't make it any easier for you. If you're playing for Manchester United, in some cases, it might amplify and make it worse. So we're wishing him a speedy recovery, and hopefully we'll get some clarity on just exactly what is the nature of his illness sooner rather than later, because I don't think all these rumours, reports, and this sort of mystery element to what is going on really help anyone, to be honest with you. Uh, there's another story. It's an interview in The Guardian that I saw, which is quite interesting. James Weir, who made his debut, don't remember, probably don't remember this, but when Marcus Rashford made his Premier League debut against Arsenal, James Weir came on late in that game. I think it was for Ander Herrera in that 2016, I think it was, under Louis van Gaal. Their careers obviously took very different paths. Marcus Rashford going on to play for England regularly, win a few trophies at Manchester United, become a regular for Manchester United, of course, one of the biggest names in football. James Weir, Basically retired at the age of, um, he's a little bit older than Marcus, I think. He retired at 28 years old, had a lot of injuries, went to Hull, went to Slovakia and Hungary and places like that and had a few operations and it just didn't work out for him. I'm always fascinated by stories like this and interviews by that because you, you don't hear a lot about players that didn't quite make it because of injury and because of other circumstances as well. And it's a really fascinating interview in The Guardian. And employee, if you get an opportunity, if you get the chance, just have a look at it because it's sort of opening up about the way his, his career panned out. And he's, you know, he's not bitter about it. I think he still plays football at sort of seven aside level in Cheshire. But yeah, it's just, it's just a fascinating look at how sometimes injuries can sort of send one career one way and another career the other. And yeah, just a, a really good interview there in The Guardian and one worth uh, checking out. Out. I'm going to wrap it up there. We've got um, the Paddock podcast coming up later on today. We've also got another few of the videos up on the channel you might want to go and have a look at. There's a look at Gareth Southgate, uh, why he's not the man for Manchester United, like a, almost like a mini documentary on that one. So go and check that out. I've been Jay Mottet. This has been the Paper Talk outside a very wet Old Trafford. Thanks for watching.